Hey, welcome back YouTubers. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Daniel Strong with Excel VBA is fun. Uh, we're kind of continuing on our first video where we talked about the range object uh, using text, um, using um, numbers, and telling basically Excel, telling Excel um, that it can insert text in a certain specified range. What we're going to talk about today is using the cells object instead of the range object, or sometimes uh, uh, along with. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and I'm um, going to delete this out of my test one procedure, and I'm going to go ahead and describe to you and show you how the cells object works. Um, it's similar in that um, you can assign a certain group or single cell a, a value using cells, but it does it in a different in a different manner. Rather than giving a straight name, using the cells object, um, it actually will give you almost like a not latitude and longitude. It tells you, it tells the coordinates of how what number of cell, or excuse me, what number of what row and the number of columns it is. So, for example, uh, column B would be considered two, and this would be considered uh, row three. And uh, typically in Excel, you're going to always get the row first, and then you're going to do the column second. So this would be B, B3 here would be considered 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, because it is, we do the rows first, row 3, column 2. That would be cells. Um, well, let me just show you. Uh, let's go with that. Let's go with cell B3. And the range object, as you remember, it would be considered this, would be considered correct, range B3. Uh, let's say it was equal to 1. And if we ran that, it would put the uh, 1 in that cell there. And I ran that, of course, by hitting F5. I'm going to delete that now. And with the cells object, you type cells, and you open your parentheses. And it gives you this little screen tip. It says, first, they want the row index number, and then a comma, and then the column number. So what we're going to do, if we want, if we want B3 there, we're going to tell it, and you see it's got mad at me. It's in red because I clicked away. And that was in the middle. It's just telling me that this is an incomplete sentence here. Cells with an open parenthesis are not going to get you anywhere. In fact, if I try to run this, it's going to say uh, that's a no-no. This is not going to cut it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to cancel that. R trying to run. Cells, we're going to take one, two, three. So we're going to say row three, and I'm going to hit a comma, and there's our screen tip again, and now this is in bold. So right now we're at the column index, and we wanted row, or excuse me, column one, two, uh, column two. So, excuse me, cells three, comma, two, and I close it up, and let's say we wanted that to equal the word blah, like we did in our first video. Let's see if that worked. Cells three, two equals blah. You'll notice when I hover my mouse over it, um, even if I debug it by hitting F8 twice, it's not going to tell me anything. Uh, for some reason, whenever you hover over an empty or blank cell, it, it will not give you, it won't tell you that if they're empty. So I'm going to hit F8, and you see that now when I hover over it, it does have a value in it, and it's willing to tell me that it equals to blah now, which is right on. So, uh, we use the cells 3, 2, um, and you're probably asking me, well, how do you do a range of cells? Then you can't just say range, or excuse me, cells 3, comma, you know, 3 through 18, comma, column, what it, it, it's, it's easier than it sounds. In order to do a range using this, uh, of multiple cells, you would use the range object in uh, conjunction with cells. So the first, um, the first one we would use is the range of cells. Let's say one comma one. That would be that would be a one, right? One, row one, column one is a one. We want to do a one through a uh, through c six, like our first video. Re range of cells one comma one. That's a one. If I hit a comma, now I'm going to say through cells. Um, a, let's say, no, C, 
excuse me, we've got to do six. So we're going to say six. And then the number of columns is one, two, three for, for C. So six row, third column. And I close that with parentheses. Now, I have to give this range uh, object a final closed parentheses. When I, oh, and when I clicked away, it got mad at me again. They said, uh, basically, you need to have that equal to something, or we're not going to like you anymore. So let's have uh, that equal to the value of 12, just randomly here. So we have A1, essentially, through C6 equals to 12. So let's run this one at a time. I'm going to hit F8. This is going to equal blah, and sure enough, now we're going to have everything equal 12. So I overwrote over the word blah. You'll notice that it doesn't matter where I have my selection. I could select that cell, and if I run this macro, um, it, it doesn't have any effect on the selection necessarily. So what we've done um, is we've made A1 through C6 equal to 12. Now why that matters is sometimes we have what's called variables. Variables are um, things that can change. For example, if I had the letter X be equal to 1, let's run that, let's run that really quick. Um, if I hit uh, F8 a couple times, first of all it says X equals empty, but if I run over that and I hit F8, it has now run that command and X sure enough equals 1. We're going to go a lot more, a lot more in depth into variables because you can have X or the word blah or anything you want to be equal to whatever you want and that can change. So uh, especially when we're doing the loops, that's going to be extremely important. Main thing I want you to get out of this is that the range object you use uh, either cells uh, to to be your starting and ending value of the range from this through this, or you can use range to actually type in an exact object as in A1 through C6, and you just surround that in quotes, and that would uh, essentially change it. So first we're going to make that be 12. Now we're going to make it be 13, but using a different method. We use cells. We used uh, straight up range uh, using an, an aimed one. And uh, in fact, if you have been, and, and you should have been watching Mike Gervin's videos by now, you should watch a lot of them because they're fantastic. You will know that you can name this range. Let's name it um, my range. It's pretty vague, but for now it'll do. What I've done is I've stepped into the name box and after I've made my selection. And when I step into here and click, I can type anything I want. And in fact, when I select them, yeah, I selected the thing called my range and it highlights it for me. So what we can do, we can use the range object for that. Range, open parentheses, quotes. I'm going to type my range in quote in parentheses. My range equals Let's have 15, why not? So now my range we know is A1 through C6 and Excel knows that because we've named it. So now if we um, get to that point, range my range equals 15. When I hit F8, sure enough, it knows what to do. It has changed them all to 15 because we named that range. So a range is really handy. Cells comes in handy whenever you assign a variable like X to equal, uh, you know, changing numbers. So I could change, since x is 1 right now, since we named it that, this would do the same thing. Uh, cells x comma 1, well, right now that would mean 1, 1. Um, so I know I'm, I'm trying to unload a lot of information at once. But um, that would still run the same play because x equals 1. So a, a1 through c6 equals 12, and it still worked. And uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and stop this video. Um, next video, we'll probably talk about using stop to debug certain things. Um, we'll talk about several other awesome things. Thank you so much for tuning in, and God bless you. Catch you next time.